the thing that I really want to talk to you about, because I did a film this week, so I want to talk about me for a minute. <laughs> um, uh, and, well, I didn't do it this week. I did it at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And I dealt with the fact that I'd been cancelled. I dealt with it. And then this film comes out this week, and I felt so hurt and upset all week. So how did it feel to you once you had been expunged from your own dance company? I mean, you, you want to tell us the story of how that came to be? Yeah, you know? because I think I think on the one hand, what going back to what we were saying is that you, I I think the young people have been hijacked, and I feel really um, protective actually and quite sort of I want to raise I think I did want to raise the alarm to say this is a really dangerous ideology and it has really dangerous implications as exactly you say for, for women for children for gay rights um, I wanted to raise that alarm however the second part to that is is the fear and weakness around charities and governance and institutions that there's a capitulation and a cowardice there of like well we've been on a training course Rosie and you're out of date and it's like well hang on don't you want to listen to what I have to say first so you know you have these kind of people that sit on boards who are all very well when they're drinking the free white wine and the red carpets but they're not okay when there's actually a really serious situation going on and you know I'm all up for like I've never had a complaint against me I'm all up for proper procedures of course mm. absolutely but when this goes on for month after month after month after month and they're no longer following any kind of grievance complaints procedures whatsoever they're spending I mean tens of thousands of pounds of Arts Council money on hiring their own lawyers against me mm. and the company's called Rosie K Dance Company and I'm called Rosie K um, there just came a point where I had to leave mm. because it was no longer would no longer trust them or work with any of these people again. Um, how how uh, what, did did you what did it do to you emotionally? It was it it's really sad because my dad died last year, I'm sorry. and it was sort of worse than that. Really, because I kind of had to kill my baby, myself, my company, my twenty five years of work. I sort of had to kill that, and and face the consequences of that, and know it was not going to be easy coming out of this mm. and a lot of soul searching i mean i was probably i mean i was ill by the end i couldn't eat couldn't sleep throwing up all the time mm. um actually after i resigned at least i could start eating and sleeping again because there was something inside of me like this kind of piece of steel yeah. of going i i i need to fight not just for me but for other people that need to stand against this ideology. I will not be bullied into complete silence because because it was existential. If you're going to make me, I mean, they were like, I've seen since subject access data requests, they were like talking about how to re-educate me and getting me training and very worried about Rosie's extreme views about women's rights. It's like, they're not extreme views. This is what's so bonkers. It is, they're not extreme views. They're not views. extreme so, views, so, they're mainstream views. And so, but the ability to, in the thing that concerns me, and I'm sure it does you as a parent, is the fact that this stuff doesn't come from nowhere. No. It's, um, it's put into kids' heads. And I suppose my most cynical side of me says that this was thought through and it was planned. It was like, here's the problem with the modern world. The way to solve it is to turn all children into the same thing and to believe the same thing and to take away the ground, the groundings of truth where you can be free from and instill in them an ideology which they could never veer away from. Which is which I find terrifying for my own kids, and I'm so blessed that I get to unindoctrinate them every time they come out of school. So, do you think do you think there's something deliberate about the way that this this stuff is being forced on kids? And and you know, do, in regards to your non-binary dancers, do you feel like um, that was them you were looking at them, and that that they were being true to themselves, or did you just see this sort of? Because I see the kind of glaze when I speak to people. Yeah, like that's that. right. There is, there is, there is, there is that sort of glassy eye thing, and I think I felt quite upset because, um, you know, I did, I, I, I did, and do genuinely care for them, and I, and I, and I certainly wouldn't want people going through invasive and nasty hormone treatments and and and, and reassign, sexual reassignment surgeries because. If you read those stories of the detransitioners, both male or female, they're utterly heartbreaking. Yeah. And you're waking up with a body every morning that no longer, you know, these were healthy, healthy bodies that now have multiple lifelong 
health issues. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about you know, ability to orgasm or have any kind of fulfilling sex life. It's it's brain development issues. It's it's osteoporosis. It's it's um, incontinence for life. You know, it, it, it's why utterly do we have, horrific. So, if, when I did a subject like this request for the lesson plans for PSHE and RSE in my school, one of them said that they teach uh, about the warning signs of FGM coming up, like right. young girls exactly. going on holiday yep. Yep. for a short period of time yep. over the summer. And it was like, we teach that we've got to really be aware of all of yeah. that. Why does that not apply to young kids when it comes to gender reassignment? But, but this is, I mean, I guess... Or empowerment, as they like to call you, it. You'll have read some critical race theory and some queer theory. And, Just and a I bit. I think the kind of, the, the whole double think, con, like, contra sometimes it's not even one contradiction, sometimes there's several contradictions. You know, that whole thing, like, gender-affirming care. Mm which means something completely different yeah. entirely. You know, the, the, that, that whole way of taking language, and, and I think Andrew Doyle's really good at explaining, you know, because he, he did a PhD in literature, so he, he, he explains how the way that words have been, they sound like good words, inclusivity and e equity and diversity, yeah. but they've all been turned to mean something the entire opposite and and it's really hard to read it i've tried to read judith butler it's 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 really difficult whereas really good feminism jermaine greer it's very straightforward you really get it yeah. really quickly good ideas should and could be communicated very clearly the obs 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 of oh, oh god don't oh. Me, I, I tried to say summarily oh i got it Some, ah, summarily summarily uh, uh, the Obsfic yeah, the, the blurring yes. and the and the obfuscation. Thank you. Well yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Of 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 meaning of language, um, in order to disrupt and dismantle one's physical material reality, which is my expertise, like having a body. We all have bodies, but then what that does to the mind and to decision making and thus to society and politics, that's it's it's just. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's amazing. It's a coup. Yes. It's a coup. It's an ideological coup. It's an ideological coup. That's exactly what it is. It's 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 a war with it's it, it's a the, the I mean the, one of the side effects of the war, the casualty, is the death of language actually, yeah. rather than the machine gun that you're used to kill people with. The casualty is we no longer know how to talk to each other in certain it's, circumstances. It, it, it's language. It, it, it's it's friendships. Yeah. Uh, it, it's humour. Oh, That's God. really good. Don't you miss it? It's I like do. jeepers, creepers. Yeah, yeah. And you know when you're in like a space of people that you can talk freely with because you suddenly will start making terrible jokes. Yeah. You, you're spending the rest of your time just, just being quiet. It's that idea also that institutions that we trust, we no longer trust, whether it be the police. We're um, taking those back. We've or the got, NHS, yeah. or like you say, schools. Schools just got to be the main because one. because I was watching all of this coming through and coming up th through the conspiracy theories, kind of going, oh, no one's going to buy the whole transhumanism stuff. Seeing it in the fashion magazines, going, oh yeah, well they're kind of doing the whole trans chic thing, you know, okay, interesting. And I think then through COVID, coming back after COVID, suddenly it's just it's gone huge. It's 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 really. It's out in the open now, and I I'm, I really hate this distrust of reality. I hate it. It's horrible, isn't it? Because it's very destabilizing, and it makes you want to be quiet. And I think that's probably the the way that the agenda is. So what's there? So you've started up a new dance company now. I have. What's it called? It's called K Two Co. K Two Co. K Two Co. And um, I've got a lovely advisory board filled with interesting. Lots of girls, I hear. Lot of female lads, <laughs> lots of feminists, people from the military, Good. people from business. I miss people feminists. from law. Yeah, mm. yeah, all very bright, very articulate. Um, I'm got a tour booked for next year of Five Soldiers because that's like my best known work, and yeah. it, it encapsulates everything in one hour: physical onslaught, full on, um, like dance, uh, brutal, political, empathic, emotive. You know, it, it's it's got everything in it. So it's like let's get that show out and weather the storm, and just not give up, just keep going, and. I mean, like people say to me, you must have the skin of a rhino. And it's like, well, of course I don't. I'm a bloody artist. Yeah. Of course, you, you, 
you don't go and spend like your whole like day dancing around in a studio if, if you're really tough and hard and yeah. miserable you've got to be light and playful and creative and funny and nonsensical curious. and curious and silly and mad and highs and lows of humanity and imagination in order to do my job so I've got to stay being me but you are strong so I think skin of a rhino is wrong it's more it's in it, a core it, isn't it it's yeah. core it's oh, core it's don't, core I've, uh, don't, I've been in enough, enough country dance classes to have been fronting Watson Coleman going core zip it up you'll never have access to your imagination Lawrence if you can't do the da- whatever dance well, Dozy Dale or something oh god I was so bad I'm haunted by my, my dance history <laughs>